and welcome to the channel. I have with me here my 2020 Gibson Les Paul Classic in Ebony Finish. Now, if you haven't seen my unboxing video from one year ago, then the link will be right here above. You can check it out. I'll also include it in the description as well. well. Real quick, if you don't know about these classics that Gibson has been producing lately, uh, it's got Zebra 61 Burst Bucker pickups. Um, it's got the push-pull pots on the volumes, um, which splits the coils. And you also have this one here on the tone knob on the bottom, which takes everything to the bridge pickup, um, everything full on. And then this one takes it out of phase, kind of like the Peter Green, uh, Gary Moore type thing. But that's that. It has Grover kidney style tuners. I do like that it has a metal jack plate right here. It's not like a huge deal, but it's just a nice added feature that my 17 traditional does not have. It's a plastic one. It does have the pick guard and I chose to leave the pick guard on. I think it looks very nice on this black. If you want to know more information about just a general layout of this guitar, it's easily found on Gibson's website. It's, there's lots of YouTube videos that people talk about the specs and the, the specifications and everything of this guitar. But what I'm really making this video for is that I purchased this guitar one year ago. I believe uh, it finally arrived May 13th, 2020. So early in the year, I went searching for one. I did a lot of research and I decided on um, the classic. I decided on the ebony finish. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to Bob Furlong, who's with Sweetwater. He uh, found this for me and I uh, got a great deal for it too. Now, like I said, the reason why I'm making this video today is one year into playing this classic, do I still like it? No. I love it. I love it. And I really mean that. Um, I cannot say enough good things about this guitar. It sounds great. And uh, at the end of this video, I'll give you some sound samples of it. There's plenty of them on YouTube as well. But I do want to say it is totally worth this purchase for this guitar. I can't find the complaint uh, on the finish. It was immaculate except for one spot. And that spot is right here. I don't know if you can see this in the video or not. It's not going to show up for you. But uh, if you're not up close to it, you can't notice it. But what you have here is like where they oversprayed the finish and it got on the fretboard itself, but it's only on the first fret. And so it's not a huge deal. At some point, it's going to wear off anyway. And so not a deal breaker for me. Someone who watched my unboxing video a year ago uh, asked me if I use the out of phase feature very much. And I will say I don't use it very much. However, I do use it occasionally and it adds a nice little touch, a, a, a nice change to the normal sounds that I usually play. It's a nice feature. It's, it's there if I need it and I can use it when I want to. But really, most of the time I don't use it. The coil splitting. Do I use that very much? Occasionally I do. There are certain songs that I play live that call for just a little bit uh, more single coil sound uh, to come through in the mix. I uh, don't use it very often, but there's a certain songs it just really shines. Now, I've been playing guitar for over 20 years, and I have just now really started to play with tone knobs. Now, for many years, I did, everything's just full on tin, and uh, I still do that quite a bit. But now I'm starting to just try to coax different tones out of my guitars. This one's no exception, and I start playing with those tone knobs, rolling them back and forth, and just getting sounds I like. This guitar responds very well. These pickups are plenty loud enough. Uh, it's, they're humbuckers, and they're Gibson humbuckers. 
uh, 61 burst buckers and they are, they sound great. They sound better to me than the burst buckers on my traditional. And I know there's probably other factors that go into that, but I really like this guitar is what I'm trying to say. I'll also include in the description a link or two, and I'll put it right here. Uh, this guitar being used in a live setting, I uh, play this at church and um, it just really shines in the mix. And I use other guitars, I kind of rotate through. I have another Les Paul, the traditional, like I mentioned, I have a, um, a Telecaster that I use. I have a Epiphone 335 that I use. And all these guitars, I kind of rotate through, uh, but this one always is a favorite for me. And uh, this is probably the guitar I get the most comments on too. When people who know guitars and people who um, are interested in music that way, they always ask me questions about this guitar in particular. Um, and so if you're on the fence and you're like, I don't know if I should get uh, a classic, I don't know if I should get a Les Paul, well, that's, that's really your decision. But if you're asking me, I would recommend this guitar. Now, if you have any questions, if you have, you know, some things you just really want to ask me about specifically about this guitar, then please go ahead and ask them in the comments section and I'll be glad to get back to you and answer to the best of my knowledge and experience. I'm going to play just a little bit for you just to give you an idea of the sounds and the tones that can come from this guitar. I do want to warn you, I am using an iPhone to record this video. And so it's going to be in the room sound. Some people uh, will, you know, they will really hate me because I do that. Other people will say, that's great. You know, I'd rather have a more authentic sound in the room uh, when you're checking out a guitar. Whatever the case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, go back and watch the unboxing to see my excitement uh, when I first got it. And uh, I tell you what, again, one year into it. I still love this guitar. This will be my signal chain today. The Joyo AC tone is acting as my amp. And then that's going into the Yamaha EMX 512, which will be coming out of Yamaha speakers. <laughs> I just recently changed to 11 gauge strings. Uh, I've always played tens on these style guitars, uh, but I wanted to try 11. So far, I've been very pleased with the outcome and uh, I may stick with them, we'll see. I'm also using a medium gauge pick uh, put out by Pick Boy, I believe. I'm gonna start with clean tones with no uh, overdrive and then I'm gonna go through a progression of pedals and just let you hear different sounds. I'll be switching in and out of these and I'll try to note that as well. All right, neck pickup. Phase sound you have to put it in the middle and then pull this knob out on this particular classic you can play with the tone knobs kind of mellow it out a little bit Now 
let's just say that you're on the bridge pickup and you've got your volume down, you know, to where you want it. You got tone knob set, and uh, what you do if you want to bypass all of that, you just pull out on this switch. So if you're playing on your neck pickup. You want to switch to the bridge without changing anything else. Just pull that out. It's full volume. You can also uh, split the coils. So this is a neck pickup. But they, there is a difference, and there's a complete palette of tones that you can get out of a machine like this. Um, and I didn't even really play with the tone knobs very much there. But that's the selections, that's the settings that you have on this uh, 2020 Gibson Les Paul Classic. Now I'm just going to play through some random things. Uh, I'll put up on the screen what effect is being used at that particular moment. Thank you. 
can have fun on this guitar all day long. Hope you enjoyed this video and remember, keep it authentic.